inventors, entrepreneurs, not just in Silicon Valley, but in Silicon Savannah, in Kenya, in Bangladesh, in Bolivia. The opportunity is for change while people are on the move. We need to feel comfortable, we need to feel in charge of our lives, we need to feel that we have, can design our spaces. Tech Fuji has become like a hashtag where, you know, the tech community really wanted to get involved. What was exciting about this was that it, sort of, it could shift the conversation away from refugees being, you know, oh dear, what are we going to do? Uh, saying this is actually an active, positive thing where we can empower refugees, we can bring them into, you know, this inclusive community and give them, you know, empower them to the local economy or whatever. We spoke to practitioners, people running ICT for Refugee projects, to learn more about their work, to learn about the context that they're working in and the challenges that they face. And we also spoke to refugees themselves to understand their situation and the way in which they use and relate to digital technology. Probably the most important measure which organizations could support is really the whole issue of training qualification. For example, in our case, we're thinking about establishing a kind of coding school um, in, in Gaziantep. Startups here pose a very large possibility because uh, at least what I see is so many founders around me who take the risk and include people also who uh, came to Europe as refugees. For me, this is the power of these technologies because now the whole world is, is, is uh, seeing open source movement, you know. I learned the 3D printing in three weeks using the forums of, of, of the company of 3D printers. So I could make that device for my blind friend and it, it was like $35. Uh, and when he used it, he said, I haven't worked like this since I was injured two years ago. Our operations started in 2012 when we started working on the Syrian border. So what we did is we took this e-card converted into a card system for our beneficiaries so they can go and do shopping from the local markets and they can buy actually what they need. We've uh, experimented with 3D printed prosthetics. We worked on some umbilical cord clamps in Haiti. We've worked on water fittings in the pool. It's the ability to very quickly iterate. I think we did something like five different kinds of umbilical cord clamps in a day, engaging with the people who are actually going to be using it, saying this isn't quite right, this needs to click, to click a bit better, it needs to be slightly springier here. Wouldn't it be great if you could actually take your education with you? You know, if you went from Syria to Jordan and then you went from Jordan to Germany and you were still able to access educational resources in digital format, you still had your records, you had your certificates, you had your, you know, your mentor who you were on WhatsApp with. If there was a, a circumstance where we could make education also portable, um, then that would be an amazing thing. Um, just the sole fact that people suddenly, even in an online study system, see themselves not as refugees anymore but as students, is a complete mind change that um, opens a new universe of opportunity suddenly to, um, to refugees. We went back actually with UNICEF and started building very simple things. We went back with count boxes of books uh, and we started building libraries under tents. It also provides sort of a safe, a safe space and a place where people can look ahead and sort of be able to protect themselves into the future. Ahmed is a Syrian refugee who had to flee his home and, and um, get to Jordan because of the bombing on his house. So most of these children are of the lost generation. So he tried and turned his caravan or his house into an educational hub using one of these computers that we gave away as donations. Digitization is an area where we need and where we want to explore new avenues and create new partnerships with you guys. So please do continue the discussion with us and help us maintain this network of different actors from different sectors. Thank you.